welcome to Drawing Fundamentals with Miss Broad. I am going to make you a confident artist that can draw any sort of object. Today, we're going to be focusing on drawing two types of objects, objects of your choice, actually. You're going to be drawing an animal and an everyday object. For your animal, I recommend not going super complicated with your animal. I chose my favorite animal, a peacock. For your everyday object, something that is cylindrical in nature. So if you think to geometry, that is something that has an oval on the top, and oval on the bottom and is connected by straight lines. Sodi pops are good to look at, look at. Things like vases, anything that is cylindrical in nature is gonna be really helpful for the everyday object. You're also gonna need those images on your Chromebook to refer to. We're not tracing, but we're going to use our eyes to go back and forth between the photo and what we're drawing. You are also gonna need three different colors of drawing utensils. These are, again, your personal preference, but I need you to have a red, a blue, and a black or gray coloring utensil. I personally like ballpoint pens. They're very glidey, they're very good for drawing. Maybe you prefer skinny markers, maybe you prefer colored pencils, especially if you have the erasable kind, that might be good. Or maybe you're a person that likes a gel pen. I'm going to go with a combo one-two punch with a gel pen and a ballpoint pen. Now, let's talk a little bit about drawing. Drawing is a big, scary thing, but I promise it doesn't have to be a big, scary thing as long as you learn the foundations, the fundamentals, the basics. So when you're working, you should be working from the general to specific. So what that means is you go from the big ideas to the little ideas. If you think about it as a picture, first you zoom out on a picture and you see the whole shape, all the whole thing. Then as you move in, you see more and more and more and more and more details and you focus in on those details. Drawing is the same exact way. Don't get overwhelmed with all the detail work first. Find the general things first. When you're working, going from general to specific, it's really important to stay really loose with your writing utensil. So instead of writing right here and drawing very, very tight with your hand muscles, you're actually gonna move back here and work from your wrist muscles. You're gonna rotate your wrist a lot to get lots of different shapes that we're doing. Stay really gestural, which means staying uh, like this, like very loosey-goosey. I'm not trying to make a perfect oval because a lot of times drawing is about searching out and finding the form um, then as you get more specific that's when you can again slide your hand down the writing utensil and you can draw a light a lot tighter to get those very specific details when you're working you're gonna be going shapes with red lines with blue details with gray and black um, the other thing that's gonna be your best friend are these things called ellipses ellipses are ovals but they can be fat ellipses, they can be really short and skinny ellipses, but ellipses, my friends, are in everything. Almost every object has an ellipse somewhere. This is gonna be the base shape of so many of your different objects that you work on. The last thing is the human brain can only remember details for three seconds, not minutes. So when it's, you're working on something, it's important that your eyes are frequently going back and forth to your reference photo, to your drawing photo, or your drawing paper. All right, let's get started. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my red, gel pen and i'm going to start to find the shapes so when i examine my peacock over here i see lots of circles i see lots of triangles i see kind of some long skinny ellipses some big fat circles to make up the body the body of your animal is going to be the biggest part where the most of the mass is in your animal and i also kind of see like a trapezoid shape now some shapes that you see aren't going to look like shapes they're going to look like Shapes on an angle or shapes that you stretch out, those are called organic shapes. But as long as you're breaking your animal down into these little kind of puzzle pieces, you are doing the right thing. So I'm going to go ahead and start to just continue to reference my photo and do the shapes of my animal. Ta-da! I'm done with my shapes. Now, does this look like a peacock yet? Not really. Um, it, you see that a lot of my shapes aren't connected and disjointed. That's a good thing. That means that I really focused on the shapes and I didn't move forward to the next step. Uh, when we do move forward to the next step, which is lines, we're going to be searching for lines that define our animal that are inside and outside. This doesn't mean details quite let yet. Think of it as the actual outline of your animal and the outline of separate parts. So how my peacock feathers, the green section is here, the brown section is here, and this big blue section is here. Those would be different things that I would search for. Also, when you're working on lines, it's important to use angling. So angling is when you take your writing utensil and you kind of figure out and make sure that the angle that something's at in your photograph matches up to your drawing. So I just like to go back and forth and kind of check these things up. So I'm going to go ahead with blue and find the lines in my peacock.
So you guys will notice close up, look how some of my blue lines don't exactly match, match up with my red lines. I actually like went through some of them. I went around some of them. That's because my red shapes just kind of blocked out my peacock and then I got a little bit more specific with my lines and really am kind of flushing out my peacock. Now the last step is probably the longest step, that is the detail step. This is when you will want to, on your reference photo, zoom in a little bit so that you can see more clearly what's going on in these different parts of your animal. And you want to show that here. With the uh, details part, you also wanna make sure that all the different um, outlines, like very specifically, like when I'm looking at this right here, how it goes, uh, like there's like a little bump there. I really only have it as a straight line here. That's when I could go and make this a little bit more specific to actually represent my picture. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so I'm gonna stop there for now. Now, I could spend probably hours on this getting it more and more and more detailed, but I think that you guys understand how we work from that. Now, cylindrical shapes, your everyday shape, we are going to operate a little bit less organically. Um, a good way of thinking about the animals is really more organic, more geometric. Um, so with the everyday object, because of things being having to line up and things having to balance, normally everything has like a center point of access, meaning that there's a straight line down it that everything is sort of symmetrical to. So even though you might have that can, that can doesn't look like this, right? We have one to the left and one to the right. That soda can wouldn't stand up straight. So it's really important that when you are drawing something that is cylindrical, that you have a line down the center that kind of helps you center your ellipses so they're not all whopper drawn. So I'm gonna start exactly the same way that I did on my peacock. I'm gonna start by finding the different shapes. Like I mentioned, ellipses are your best, 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 best friend. There are a ton of ellipses on this potion bottle. There's one right here. There's one at the bottom of the cork. There's one, two, three right here, four, five. There's one big one right here, six, seven. There's probably even more than that. You also, from here to here, can draw many different ellipses showing and keeping the steadiness of your shape. Ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing mostly ellipses to figure out my shape here. And that's where I'm gonna stop for that. I don't wanna get into the outline because that's what comes next. I really just wanted to focus on building up my ellipses. Now, when I do my lines in blue, I might have to go back and go on top of an ellipse and on the bottom of the ellipse to more accurately portray what is happening here in my bottle. So I just noticed that I made a mistake here. As I'm working my way down the bottle and I'm counting the one, two, three rings, this ring here, this ring here, ah, I made a mistake. Just continue drawing. Just fix it as you go. That is one of the most important lessons with drawing is if you see something wrong, don't keep drawing. This is way wrong. This is the shoulder of the bottle I drew. Holy moly, did I get that way wrong. So I'm just going to draw right over with my blue pen and show where the top of the shoulder should be. And if I have to go off my paper, that's totally okay. I'm gonna do that angling to make sure that I'm getting the correct angle there. So I have a pretty good looking bottle here. Now the last thing is to go in with details. This can be things like the cork. It can be things like little reflections I see. There's some little indi indications here. I might also wanna go back and maybe even start putting some shadows to show the difference between the shadows and the reflection.
So again, just like the peacock, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But I'm going to stop there for now because I feel like I have a really good sense of the form. Good luck on your drawing fundamentals worksheet.